it is well known that Chandragupta founded the Mauryan Empire. But what is not well known is how he did it. In this video, I am going to tell you the story of Chandragupta and how he founded the Mauryan Empire. For someone who was the founder of an empire and particularly an empire like that of the Mauryas, you would think a lot had been written about him. But that is not the case. When it comes to Chandragupta's origin, our sources do not agree with each other. Some sources argue that Chandragupta is related to Nanda king, whereas Buddhist sources mention that Chandragupta belonged to a republic. On the question of Chandragupta's early life, apart from the fact that Chandragupta was recruited by Chanakya, nothing much is known. In the historical records, the first time Chandragupta is mentioned is in the Greek and Roman sources which talk about Alexander's invasion. We are told that around 326-325 BC, a person named Sandrocotus visited the Greek camp. This person, Sandrocotus, was our Chandragupta. And the reason why Chandragupta visited the Greek camp was he wanted Alexander to invade the Nanda territory. He argued with Alexander that if he invaded the Nanda territory, the people of the Nanda empire would welcome him as a liberator. But that didn't go well with Alexander. We find that Alexander was so offended by the boldness and the way Chandragupta spoke that he ordered that Chandragupta should be put to death. But that didn't happen because Chandragupta was able to successfully flee from the Greek camp and then he went straight back to his base. During this period, Chandragupta base was situated in the lower Sindh region and it was from here he used to wage guerrilla warfare against the Greeks. The year 323 BC was an important year for Chandragupta. This was the year when Alexander died. After the death of Alexander, a civil war broke in which Alexander's generals fought with each other for territory. This civil war also had a great impact on the Indian territories which were conquered by Alexander. When Alexander had conquered these territories, he had put Greek garrisons there. When civil war broke, we find that these regions also rebelled and they drove out the Greek garrison. For Chandragupta, this created a unique opportunity and now he moved into this region. This region, that is the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent was during this period known for its soldiers. And these soldiers became the mainstay of Chandragupta's army. Chandragupta also became ally with various kings from Punjab and having assembled his army, he decided to wage war against the Nanda king Dhananand. For Chandragupta, his plan was very simple. He decided to attack at the center of the Nanda empire. But this failed miserably and we find that there was a situation in which Chandragupta nearly lost his life. Having suffered a serious defeat, Chandragupta now began to ask what went wrong. The answer came from a lady. The story goes that after the defeat, Chandragupta took shelter in a village. There he heard a mother who was scolding her son when he had burned his finger while eating a hot dish. The mother was saying that when he is eating a hot dish, he is doing the same mistake as Chandragupta has done. Instead of eating from the edges, was eating from the center where the dish was hot. For Chandragupta, this was a revelation. Now, he realized what his mistake was. He was attacking at the center of a powerful empire where the defenses was strong. He now decided to change his approach and he decided to attack at the frontiers of the Nanda empire. This approach worked very well for Chandragupta and it took around four to five years for Chandragupta to completely destroy the Nanda empire. Chandragupta now has to deal with the Nanda emperor. What happened to the Nanda emperor is uncertain. Jain sources tell us that Chandragupta spared the Nanda emperor and he allowed the Nanda emperor and his family to take as much treasure as a chariot can load. Other sources on the other hand tell us that Chandragupta put the Nanda emperor to death. After destroying the Nanda empire, Chandragupta now became the emperor of Magadha and he made Chanakya his chief minister. After Chandragupta came to the Magadhan throne, he found out that the heartland of the Magadha was in revolt. Chandragupta dealt with this revolt with an iron hand 
and we are told that he brutally suppressed various rebellions that were taking place in the heartland of the Magadhan Empire. Having secured his heartland, Chandragupta now focused his attention on the western part of the Indian subcontinent. This region was in a state of flux after the invasion of Alexander. For Chandragupta, this was a unique opportunity to conquer some more territory. By 313 BC, he was able to conquer most of the western part of the Indian subcontinent. Having conquered these territories, now the Mauryan Empire touched the Seleucid Empire. In 305 BC, the Seleucid Emperor Seleucus Nicator shifted his attention to the eastern part of his territory. For Chandragupta, this was a serious threat because Seleucid Empire was a quite powerful empire and it had the ability to defeat the Mauryan Empire. The war that followed was advantageous for both sides. Chandragupta gained large amount of territories in the western part of the Indian subcontinent, whereas Seleucus on the other hand was given some 500 elephants by Chandragupta. These elephants were used by Seleucus Nicator in his western campaign. The Puranic sources tell us that Chandragupta's reign lasted around 24 years and in the end Chandragupta's empire stretched from the Hindu Kush in the northwest to the Bay of Bengal in the east. In south, his empire extended to the central Karnatak region. The end of Chandragupta as most of his life's event is a matter of debate. Jain sources speak of his abdication and becoming a Jain. After abdication, we are told that Chandragupta went with Jain Saint Padrabahu to Karnatak where he fasted to death in a cave. Buddhist sources on the other hand tell us a different tale.